Hey everybody, I've got a pile of packages, so let's have a mailbag. Um, this one appears to be from China. No idea what it is, so we're gonna open it up and see. Oh, oh, we got variety. Okay, um, so, wow, okay. I, I don't know what the deal is with the uh, JST style connectors. Somehow, I must have seen <laughs> a couple sales at the same time, but this is a, uh, another set of JST style connectors and uh, I got some crimpers recently. I had some other JST connectors. I kind of like that these are different. Um, so red is two, yellow is three, and blue is four. That's kind of cool. So these uh, pins here look a little bit smaller than the other JSTs I have. Uh, I don't have my crimpers over here. They're in another spot in the office. But uh, these things are little color-coded JST connectors. Not really a whole lot to say about them, except I really dig the, uh, you know, knowing how many pins it is just by looking at the color. Um, these, on the other hand, are some pin headers. And I think I got both these off eBay. So one of the things I've been seeing is they have, uh, no, I guess maybe not. These might, these are probably AliExpress. Let me see where they come from. These are AliExpress. They came from Czech Republic. If you've never been to Czech Republic, highly recommend it. Uh, but these are colored pin headers, and I thought that they were a different set that I ordered, but these are just standard length male headers, and it looks like there's four, five per color. So we've got five green, five red, five yellow, five black, five white, five blue. Um, so that's kind of cool. So the idea is, you know, the primary reason I'd use them is, you know, red to signify power and, or, you know, whatever. Um, so I didn't have a particular use for these in mind, but I thought it would be nice. There are certain times when I would want to have, you know, to just know that my, you know, yellow is going to be my signal and my red is going to be my power and black or green can be ground and things like that. So I just wanted to have a couple of these on stock. They were cheap, um, kind of a colorful order off of AliExpress or maybe eBay. Um, I think that what the deal was is they had some things where they would combine shipping with these speed pack things in uh, eBay. So just ordered a few colorful things and I think it all shipped for like two bucks together. So uh, anyway, some header pins and some JST connectors. Next up, we've got one from Amazon, and uh, I think I know what this is. I kind of been stocking up my packages so uh, so that we could do this mailbag. So let's see what we got. Oh, oh, we got an address there. My address was visible for a second, but these uh, are, have been in another mailbag. Whether you've seen it or not yet, I don't know. But these are um, these I squared C LCD screens, 16 by two. And I, there's two in a pack, and I got 10 of them here. Uh, so these things are the standard. I think these are blue and uh, just four wire hookup. You've got your uh, SDA and SCL and your VCC and your ground. Uh, four wire hookup to an Arduino, or in my case, an ESP32. And uh, I need a bunch of these screens. And I think I ordered 12 that are in another mailbag video, and here's another 10. Uh, these are the standard screens that come with the kit, but they do have the I2C backpack on them. So maybe I'll show you some of these when we get to one of the circuit boards that I designed. But right now we've got 10 LCD screens. Next up, we've got another Amazon package. Check it out. Ah, okay. Hide the address. And this is a PoE. Um, you may have heard me talk about PoE recently, but this is a five port gigabit uh, PoE switch. Four of the ports are PoE, the other port is just basically an uplink port. Uh, so the idea with this is I've been doing a lot with those um, Olimex ESP32s that can be powered over ethernet where you just use the ethernet for your connection and your power. And over here at the desk, I have another five port switch, but it does not provide power. And so for some of my testing, I actually need power over here. My, I do have an eight port power over ethernet on the other side over there by my uh, mission control desk, but I don't have one over here where I record YouTube and where I do my work. So um, this was a pretty good reviewed one. There is There are a couple that are cheaper than this, but this one had overall really good reviews. I mean, it's a... It's a switch. It does say lifetime warranty, so we'll see see about that. Um, but it's an all-metal device. I like these Netgear ones overall. I'm actually going to replace another Netgear one with this. Now, one of the things that's interesting is they have uh, the option a lot of times to upgrade the power supply, and when you do, you get more power out of this thing. So uh, for now, though, 
I have all the power I need. So this thing comes with a decent size. I mean, for a little switch like this, I mean, the power supply is almost as big as the unit itself. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run from this one into my wall outlet, and then that will allow me to hook up four ESP32s with power and network and all that stuff. So uh, nothing too exciting for you guys, but I'm pretty excited about it because I needed one of these. Next up, we've got another Amazon package. And this is a stripping wheel. Better yet, this is five stripping wheels. And so these are um, for an angle grinder. And this is sort of a non-damaging paint stripping wheel. And uh, so you can see it's got like a normal grinding disc on top that They've just kind of, I don't know if maybe they just did away with the edge to make it so that people wouldn't use it as a grinding disc. It's just straight up fiberglass. But then this purple stuff will scrape paint and not cause a lot of damage. Uh, now I do have another set of stripping things coming in that may be down here. And uh, when I open those up, then we'll kind of put them together and I'll show you what I'm doing. So let's see if this is what I think it is. Yep. So these are the two inch version and let's get them out. I think there should be 10 of these. I debated if I should have bought five or 10 of these. I don't think I'm gonna go through a ton of them. Uh, so I didn't wanna buy a bunch of them and just have them kind of decomposing in the garage, but it should be, I guess this is a Ziploc. Uh, so it has this little arbor thing here. And the idea is that this goes on here and this goes on here and then you can use, I think, uh, and then you can use your drill or um, like your quarter inch angle grinder uh, or die grinder type thing to do some detail work. So what I'm working on, I'm gonna have to raise the camera up. So this is the top of an original IBM PC 5150, and it was pretty rusty. It kind of looked like this. I did do some chemical stripping on this one just to see which way. I've got about seven of these things that I need to strip down, and so I was debating if I was going to do chemical stripping or if I was going to do abrasive stripping, and uh, my final decision was that this stuff was not only just really nasty to work with, the chemical, but I was also worried that when I rinsed it off, you know, I mean, just a little bit on my skin was pretty annoying. And I was worried that like my cat would walk through the area after I was done with it. So I really wanted to make sure that I got everything off and I just decided I didn't want to use chemicals. So I am going to blast this stuff with the um, angle grinder and the die grinder and, you know, just take off all this stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-powder coat these cases. And so what I want to do is to restore some of these to the factory IBM gray color, as you can see in here, it's it's nasty. So, and I do have a little bit of detail work here to do, but um, I'm gonna do some of them back to the original IBM gray beige color, grayish, and uh, I might do one or two in some kind of more modern outfit, like a black or something like that. Uh, maybe even a blue or red or something like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of resto mod a couple, and I'm going to refurbish a couple of them, and I'm gonna rebuild seven IBM uh, PCs and XTs back to their former glory. But in order to do that, I need to get this paint off. Next up, this is kind of silly, but uh, my wife got these for me, and I thought they were kind of funny. I thought I'd show you guys. Uh, these are um, cat bag closers. Let's see if I can just get this out. And uh, let's rip this. So the idea of these things is they're sort of like a replacement for twist ties. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have pulled that out. They're sort of a replacement for twist ties where, let's just put a couple of these in the bag that I ripped on the wrong side. So you fill up your bag with whatever and then when you want to twist tie it, you bunch it up in here and you put the cat's tongue in here and then you pull the cat's tongue to close the uh, thing off and to kind of pinch it closed and it actually works really well. Um, that works really really well. So these things are, um, what are they called? They're called uh, 
Joy MSC, perfect for sealing in freshness. Uh, and they are meow bag ties. So there's a three pack of those. And I think these originally came from Cracker Barrel. All right, two more. Um, this one is truly a mystery. I'm gonna be careful opening it. I need to change my blade. At least I'm gonna change my blade around. Let's go this side. I don't think that side's been used. It's a great knife. If you don't have one of these knives, you need one of these knives. Uh, let's give it another cut. There we go. Okay, so this is something. Uh, yeah, can't tell what they are yet. Let's see where it came from. Okay, this is definitely an eBay seller. Uh, so, open this up. Ooh, that smells funky. Good luck reading that. 10 pieces of something, 78, 7B, I don't know. So I'm gonna open them up and find out. Oh, I can see what they are from the side. These are others and I got, um, I don't wanna show you what they're for, but these are more D-sub connectors. And I've been getting kind of into the D-sub connectors. Um, so these are male and female d sub connectors and these are made to go on a circuit board so you can see they've got nine pins there and nine pins there and then these little grabber thingies that you can solder on to give yourself a good hold and i just find that these old retro connectors like this are just really kind of handy you know when you need eight eight nine pins on something like that uh you're not going to be able to reverse it and stuff like that it's just a really nice little connector now i've got a pcb project for i think it's this one uh, a couple of these so i'm gonna build those up and then i figure while i was at it i would just get the opposite side in case i found a reason to do some things with that so um i got a total of 20 of these pcb connectors and then whatever this is um like I said, the, the deal has been like on eBay, if you order from certain suppliers, they have these speed pack things and uh, you can pay $2, $2.79 to get a bunch of items shipped and they come in relatively quickly. Um, so this is a double row header. This looks smaller than I was expecting. Um, these are two, I wonder if that's a problem. These are two millimeter spacing two by 20 P I'm a little concerned about this. Uh, this is a double row header, but I'm afraid that this might be the wrong size. So, uh, I, I don't remember which project these are for, but if they're for a compact flash card, that might be the right size, but I'm a little concerned that these are the wrong size connectors, but either way, these are double row header pins for something. Uh, so I'll have to find out if I did that right. And uh, if not, I'm gonna have to either do two single ones or something along those lines. And last but not least, we have another flat package here that I think is out of the way. If I, oh, that blade's so much better. Uh, let's see what this is. This is a little chip. And this is, I'm gonna guess it's a 2003. Let's see here. This, if it is, okay, yep, uh, two of them. And this is a, uh, what is that? That's a ULN 2003A. Uh, two little chips here, and these go at the heart of a device called the Retro Chip Tester. I mean, they're not the exact center. That would be an Atmega um, whatever chip, but uh, these are needed for a the Retro Chip Tester, which I'll be building, and you cannot get these at DigiKey right now. So I had to order two of them off of eBay, and I definitely don't want to lose these because these will stop me from uh, being able to put together the rest of the project. So uh, anyway, I think that's about, oh, is that it? Yeah, I think that's about it for the mailbag. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Sorry, I've got dirty hands. I've been working all day. Um, but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll put links in the descriptions for this stuff. If you found anything interesting, let me know. If you found none of it interesting, let me know that too. All right, have a great day. Thanks for watching.